My name is Shravan Thapu. I am a research scientist at Harvard Medical School. I wanted to understand that when people are either reading a really good book or listening to a very engaging lecture, how they almost lose themselves or get immersed in this narrative media or narrative piece. Um, and I was hoping to see if I could see that happen like on a neural level, like what is happening in their brains when that's going on, what regions are active, and maybe, you know, are there any changes that are happening? We're still currently doing research on that, but, you know, we're looking, we're doing fMRI scans, um, you know, crunching neural data, like all of that to see if we can. Uh, right now, we, our hypothesis is that there's something going on in the medial prefrontal cortex, different Perhaps like, but you know, we can't make any conclusions as of yet. Yeah, so um, I think that, and especially in the in recent years, that neural data is becoming more and more um, publicly available and into like because entering the public sphere. Um, I think that neural data is going to be the next big thing because it's becoming easier and easier to read data from the brain at a consumer level and incorporate, incorporate this data into um, all different aspects of life, whether it helps you with your meditation, um, understanding how you learn better, you know, you can think of anything. So. These ears that I'm wearing, they're actually a brainwave sensor. So this started off as a toy that basically like measures the electrical activity in my brain, right? And it takes all of this data and sends it to my ears right now, which you can see they're moving around a little bit. And what it's basically telling you is like the activity in my brain. Like when they all stand up, it means I'm kind of hyper-focused. There's a lot of electrical activity going on, but you know, maybe after this interview, I might be a little bit more relaxed and you might see them droop down. So in a way, these ears are almost like a window to my mind. I think now that, you know, industry has gotten involved, you know, previously BMIs were mainly like seen in academic circles and like in academia. Um, but now that industry has gotten involved and realized the potential of, you know, fully functioning brain machine interfaces, um, I, th I think the field is going to skyrocket like within the next, you know, 40, 50 years, like we could potentially see more and more like consumer BMIs entering the market and people using them um, just in the same way that, you know, people use fitness trackers or, you know, other measures of like, you know, bodily function. I think that there actually are some like consumer BMIs on the market. You know, this is actually one of them. I, it's a toy, but you know, it's something that's available to anybody who wants to purchase it. Um, and there are other companies out there, NeuroSky, Motive, that are all trying to push these like BMIs and help people understand like the potential of all of these things. Um, I think in the future, as people learn more and more about it, you know, there are big industry tech giants that are trying to push um, BMIs and like you know this technology out into the open, like into the public. Um, you know, Neuralink and Elon Musk being one of the biggest ones. Uh, I, yeah, definitely. In a few years, you know, maybe 20, 30 years, we could possibly see like more and like BMI is being integrated into our daily lives. You know, the biggest thing about neuroscience is that you have to understand that from a marketing perspective, everything is about experience and what neuroscience and this technology offers is a way to better communicate and share these experiences. So if companies and big businesses want to adapt to this changing market, they need to understand, you know, how can we, I guess, harness this potential of businesses, re or how can we harness this potential of reacting to all of this neural data being available and like being able to share experiences much more um, robustly. Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, like this is, a, it's one step towards getting closer to utopia. I don't think that it's the one solution for everything, but, you know, it's going to help us communicate better and, you know, it, it'll be the next step. Yeah, I, I do think that neuroscience will be a big factor in helping us reach a utopia.